Hey guys, it's me. Hey guys, we're back on private. We're back on page 12. This is chapter 13. And chapter 13. I didn't manage to get much sleep during the night. My mind raced with the thoughts of this Dr. Alexander being sold and, be, and being stuck on an island for the rest of her life. I was awake when there was a knock on the door. The person didn't wait for a response before walking in. I ran over to see Ben. He was changed out of his pajamas and into jeans and a t-shirt. He had a, he had the scarf loose around his neck by the tie. I was expecting you to be awake. He said, but even an hour. I joined and stretched my, and stretched my arms up over my head. Ben opened up the closet and pulled out the duffel bag. He set, he set the bag down on my, he set the bag down on the dresser and filled it with my clothes. My heart sank and he packed every dress in the closet. I never, I never be coming back. I may, I may never be coming back. Ben grabbed the remaining clothes and tossed them on the end of the bed. No sure, he said. Oliver will be done, done here soon. I grabbed the clothes and hurried down the hallway. I took a quick shower before putting on the dress Ben gave me. I tried my hair even before tying it back into a ponytail. When I got up to the room, Ben was zipping up the bag and placed it on the bed. I sat down next to the bag. I looked up at Ben, but he turned around to look at the empty closet. He pulled out the empty drawer and looked like he was double checking that he packed everything. He was trying to avoid having to talk to me. I was about to ask him a question, but the door on top of the stairs opened. I listened to, to I listened as the footsteps echoed as the person walked down the hallway. Oliver came into the room. He did not have his lab coat on and instead was wearing a suit. Mid turn when he heard Oliver enter. You ready, kids? You, you kids ready? Oliver said. Yes, sir, Ben said. But all of our bags are packed. Good, put them in the car. I need to talk to. To Diana, Ben and I grabbed my bag and left Oliver. Ben and I grabbed my bag and, and left. Oliver took a few steps forward and held up his hand, showing a pair of shoes. I think you will need this, he said. I took the shoes out of his hand. I gasped when I saw the mismatched laces. These were my shoes. These were the shoes that I was wearing when I was walking home from practice. Hip the shoes I was wearing when I was kidnapped. I already chuckled when I looked at him with my jaw hanging open. I slipped the shoes onto my feet and did not need to undo the laces. The soles were worn down to the mold to the soles were worn down to mold the, to mold the bottom of my feet. To mold the bottom of my feet. It was a it was a piece of my life that I would be able to hold on to. Uh, Diana, I need you to be on your best behavior. I said as soon as you step out the, uh, of this door, I don't want to hear a peep out of you. I want what if someone asks me a question? I ask. No one will ask you anything. I want you you to stay. I want you to stay next to Ben and be quiet. What, what about the airport? They're, they always ask you questions at customs. We're not going to the airport. I try my best not to show the disappointment on my face. I, I was working through water and I knew that I was not doing a good job. All night I was holding onto a piece of all night I was holding onto a piece of hope that that I would be able to cause a scene and get help in a busy airport. Oliver reached into his pocket and pulled out a large pair of sunglasses. The lenses were darker than any pair I have ever owned. Keep this on, Oliver said as he set them into as he set them 
into my face. Don't take your mouth until I tell you to. I want you to be looking down. I want you to be looking down the whole time. Where to say to? I don't know yet how your eyes will handle the sunlight. I grabbed a frame of the, of the glasses and shifted them to the them so that they rested better on my nose. And darkness blocked me from didn't expect me from seeing the odd hue of colors. That just made it more difficult to see and I could and I could only see a few inches in front of me. Clearly. I rope pulled the elastic out of my hair and I gritted my teeth as he ripped out a as he ripped out a couple of my hairs. He ran his fingers to my hair and put it down to hide more of to hide more of to have more of my face. To have more of my face. To have more of my face. Let this go, I was said. I stood in other words, I stood in other words, snake his arm around my, around my waist. As I pushed him away, but he curled his fingers on, on my side. He pulled me tighter there against his body. I squirmed under his grip. Behave, he said. I took a, a deep breath and stopped moving. Once we were started walking, I was already received to have Oliver guiding me. My limited version would have caused me to stumble and bump in, into walls. There was a blood of person standing at the bottom of the stairs. There was a blood of person standing at the bottom of the stairs. I assume she would need a jacket, sir. Ben said. Thank you, Oliver. Said. He let go of me and show. He let go of, of me and show something into my hands. I s slipped it on and I realized that I realized that it wasn't my demon jacket. It, it was another piece of my old life, like like my shoes. The the hours of the hours of work provided extra comfort. Put my hands into my pockets, hoping to find my phone or wallet, but all I had was a pack of gum. I grabbed my elbow and pulled me up the stairs. I stumbled on a few steps and I felt another hand rest against my back. I glanced behind me to see Ben. At the top of the stairs, I looked around to. At the top of the steps, I looked around to see we were in a narrow hallway. I never grabbed a fistful of my hair and forced my head down. I was stuck looking at my feet as he pulled me through the house. My glass was sliding down my nose, but I did not touch it. I could see better there over the top of the darkness. I, I, took, a, I took a mental note of the bottom. A different chair repass and, and tried and, uh, 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 to know at the bottom of the furniture he passed to try and make a map sunlight per sunlight per out the tiles below my feet when sunlight per until the ties below my feet, but he opened the front door. He's tightening his grip on my hair as he pushed me outside. He walked down a wooden deck and crossed his and and across his driveway. He he opened the the car door and pushed me inside. I said until the letter seat Oliver reached across me and fastened my seat, but I kept my hands on his on and I stood my chest and tilted my head to see out of the windshield. The driveway ended did at a large iron gate. The gate was surrounded to a fence. And to a tall fence surrounded his house. Beyond the gate, all I could see 
with trees. There were no other houses nearby. In other words, first your sunglasses like half my nose and rearranged my hair so that it was covering my face. The passenger side the door open and I watched Ben climbing. And I watched, and I watched Ben climbing. I was in the door shut and and got into the driver's seat. He fiddled with the radio before settling suddenly on the station and beginning to drive. When he approached the gate, it opened and he pulled onto the road. And the, 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 the drive was, was about an hour long and I did not recognize anything around us. Neither Oliver nor Ben said the word during the ride. Halfway through the trip, we were in a busy town. The car was stopped at the red light and I reached through the door and I saw he pulled it open and pushed my weight into the door. It didn't budge. He must have the child safety like that. Ben took at the Ben looked at me and gave his head a slight shake. I never didn't see it, but I got the message. I kept I kept my hands folded in in my lap for the rest of the ride. He pulled into the he pulled into what looked like a large field uh, with a few small buildings. As we got closer, I noticed a small air, airplane. He stopped beside the plane. He stopped beside the plane. A few men in overalls came running over to the car. Oliver turned his body so that he could see behind his seat. At me, do not say anything, Diana. What I was saying. Not say anything, Diana. What I was saying. I want you to stay next to Ben, and looked down the entire time. Ben hurried to the door and, and opened it. He held on his hand. I took it so that I didn't, didn't fall while getting out of the car. Ben wrapped his arm around me and curled me into his body. He put his other hand on my shoulder so that he was, so that he was blocking my body. The Dutch Sweeney, a man ex exclaimed. I turned to see who it was, but, can, but Ben kicked my head against his chest. Say still, Ben, whispered, I just followed me. Ben pulled. Ben pulled me around to the front of the car between the glasses and Ben's arm. I could only see a small patch of grass at our feet. Good morning, Chester, I was saying, it's nice to see you again. Likewise, sir, the other man said, we weren't expecting to see you until next week. Thank you for filling us in earlier. And if you managed to get an extra week off, of work, so why waste it? So why waste any time? He's bringing his girlfriend down with us. You have to excuse Gina. She's a nervous flyer. He was calling Ben. He was calling Ben his nephew. Justin was not know about the experiments. I started to pull away, but Ben quickly had me back against his chest. Do you mind if we board Ben next? I think she will feel better once she's on the plane. I, I think she will feel better once she's on the plane. Do the other man said, "We'll get your bags out of the car." Thank you, thank you very much, Ben said, and then started pulling me forward. Come on, sweetheart. Ben grips tightening as we got to to a flight of stairs. My knees wobbled as I struggled to see. Each step, the floor turned flat and we were walking on carpet. I pulled away from Ben and this time he let me go. I spun around to face him. Ben, we have to go now, I said. We can, he said, you know that. Once I got to the Caribbean, it's all over. I'm not coming back to Canada again. Nobody said you're not coming back. Gregory might not want to buy you. I could only see Ben silhouette through the dark glasses. I reached up to remove them, but Ben grabbed my wrist. He pushed me down into to one of the seats. He sat across the seat, cornering me against the window. Listen, Diana, 
been tightening his grip. You need to take a deep breath and calm down. I will do all I can to talk Oliver into not selling you. You're not you're going to come back with us, okay? I tell you. I need you with me here. I'm not going to settle with only seeing you once a year. <laughs> you once a year. The wind is looking good, that is really me, a man said. I could see two fingers enter the plane. I don't think you have trouble then. That's good. I was said, how is she feeling? She's so nervous, Ben said. She'll feel better once we're in the air. It's her first time flying. I'm sure she will. The ben, the, the man walked up and down the aisle of the small plane before leaving. Oliver walked into the back and returned and returned with a bottle of water. And returned with a bottle of water. When I go off her wrist and I rub the sore skin, Oliver reached into his pocket and handed me over and handed me a small cup of pills. I slipped my glass down a bit to look past the dark lenses. Four pills were in the cup. Oliver gave, always gave me three. There was a small orange pill that I have never seen before. What is this extra pill? I asked. It, it's to help you sleep, Oliver said. It's it, it's the morning. I don't need help to sleep. The, it's a long flight, and I don't need you throwing attention. I pick up, I pick out my normal three pills and swallow them with the water. Take the take the other one, Oliver said. Underneath it, as I said, Diana Ben said. The, uh, a deep breath and looked down at the pill. If I didn't take it voluntarily, I, I knew they would force it down on my throat. I knew they would force it down my throat. I wouldn't miss much being asleep. It would make the flight go by faster, and Oliver will be happy. I'm sorry for being difficult. I'm, I'm sorry for being difficult. I said. I swallowed the fourth pill and took an extra drink of water. I could see Oliver smile as I pushed my glass up my nose. I kept a fixed smile on my face. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. See you guys in the next part of the video. So we'll continue the series. Bye.